Hello and welcome. In this video we will be talking about LPG systems, about their components, different types of LPG systems and how high pressure components in LPG systems are connected. So, first of all, um, what's in an LPG system? Of course, usually uh, you need a, a source for your fuel and in LPG systems this is the, the tank. Uh, an LPG tank is different from a regular gas or diesel tank because it has to uh, keep the fuel in at a certain pressure, so around 10 bars. And this is because LPG only becomes liquid under pressure. And if you were to store LPG um, at like atmospheric pressure, then it would be very dense and you would need a very, very large tank to store it. And because LPG becomes liquid at a relatively low pressure, it's very attractive to store it at that pressure because then you can carry a lot more of it in a limited amount of space. So in cars, usually we have cylindrical tanks and toroidal tanks. Toroidal tanks are uh, made to fit in the spare tire compartment of your car. And cylindrical tanks usually are fitted in the boot or under the car. So uh, if you have a lot of room under your car, you can use a cylindrical tank. If you have a spare tire that you never need, then you can use the spare tire compartment with the toroidal, toroidal tank. And uh, in uh, that scenario, you don't lose any uh, luggage space in your car. So what other components are there in an LPG system? So in order to be able to find that out, we are going to distinguish between uh, four different types of LPG systems. The first being the most traditional version. So the, in the most traditional version of LPG systems, you usually have an evaporator. So uh, this is an evaporator that is uh, that works in the traditional way. This is an HE2000 evaporator. Um, so what this thing does is it converts the liquid gas from the gas tank in the back of the car to um, gas phase. So uh, in order to do that, it needs heat because the ev evaporation heat of LPG is a certain uh, amount of energy and it needs to uh, extract that energy from somewhere and the way most evaporators work is um, they extract this heat from the coolant of the car of, of the, the car's engine and that's why these two fittings are on this evaporator um, this evaporator is designed to be placed in between the cooling circuit of the car. So the cooling circuit upon installation is cut and this evaporator is placed in between. So it heats up as the engine heats up. Uh, second, what this evaporator does it, uh, is that it regulates the pressure um, of the gas phase LPG that comes out of it. Uh, similar to, for example, a barbecue gas bottle uh, pressure regulator. Um, this also regulates the pressure and the output pressure of this is about zero bars. So very very near atmospheric but a little bit higher. Um, another component of this traditional LPG system is a mixer. So this is an LPG mixer. This uh, mixer is placed in the intake of the engine. Um, so as you may be able to see, it has all kinds of little holes all around it. And uh, those holes allow for uh, gas phase LPG to pass through. So the way this usually works in most cases is uh, the air that the engine sucks in passes through this mixer. And um, by the Venturi effect, uh, gas uh, phase LPG is sucked into the airstream and that's how um, the engine gets its fuel supply. But um, at, for example, a stationary engine speed, uh, this effect is not sufficient um, 
So, in order to to um, to solve this problem, there is on this evaporator a magneto valve. So, this valve, uh, once um, connected to a 12 volt power supply, uh, it opens up and it motivates, it excites the evaporator to increase the flow rate of gas a little bit so that the engine can run stationary in a normal way. So what kinds of other outputs do we have here? So this is the um, gas phase LPG output. This is an, um, a relief for uh, cases in which the evaporator reaches a pressure that's too high. And uh, well, this is the connection that connects to the LPG tank. So yeah, that's pretty much it for traditional LPG systems. Let's move on to the next. The next system that we will encounter is a gas phase injection system. So, um, in order to counter some of the downsides of the traditional system, some companies have come up with this new system in which the evaporator is still there, but uh, instead of outputting a pressure of only zero bars, it outputs a pressure of uh, about one to two bars. And um, this, of course, this allows you to use a mixer like this because it would flood the entire intake with LPG, which would be bad. So in order to use this evaporator effectively, a different component is required. And Let's see if I can find it. Um, ah, here it is. So, this is an injector rail. This is uh, a component that hooks up to the high pressure evaporator and it has four outputs. So, each of these outputs can be routed to uh, one of the cylinders, um, and usually these are just connected to. Uh, the intake manifold. So for each cylinder a fitting is screwed into the intake manifold and that connects to the output of these uh, these valves. As you can see there are four um, magnetic spools and they can each be pressurized um, they can be actuated separately. So um, yeah this allows for more precise uh, dosage of the gas into uh, the engine, which is better for performance and for emissions. Okay, to move on to the next, um, I have to um, apologize because I don't have any example, um, but uh, I will try to explain it as well as I can. So the third generation of LPG systems, um, it works in the following way. So liquid gas is injected into the intake and um, this of course uh, takes away the need to have a reducer or evaporator um, because the gas doesn't need to be evaporated uh, before it is injected into the engine. So, um, this is a pretty nice method because it takes away one of the components that can fail in your LPG system. It also has the added benefit of having a cooling effect on the cylinder. Because LPG has, um, it requires heat to evaporate. Um, this actually cools down the cylinder a little bit, which is good. Um, because usually uh, running on LPG makes the engine hotter than running on regular petrol. Um, so yeah, those are two advantages of this system. Uh, there is another system that is slightly similar to this one, the fourth that we will um, encounter in this video. And this is the direct liquid injection system. So in the direct liquid injection system, Liquid LPG is injected di directly into the cylinder 
when it reaches top dead center. Uh, the best, uh, yeah, the advantage of this is that um, the maximal amount of air can flow into the cylinder. Usually with the traditional system or even with the gas phase LPG injection system, some air will be uh, filled actually with gas phase LPG because gas phase LPG is much more dense than regular liquid phase petrol. So it actually pushes away some air and it allows for less air to enter the cylinder, which uh, results in a loss of power. So with this final system, um, this problem is completely circumvented because um, first all air is sucked into the cylinder and then when the valves are closed, you have the maximum amount of air in the cylinder and then only then the fuel is added and because it's added um, in a liquid phase it also provides cooling for the cylinder which is a positive thing so those were the four lpg systems that i uh, i'm going to talk about in this video for the next part uh, we will talk about how to connect various high pressure components of lpg systems and for that we will use this AG2000 evaporator again, along with this copper pipe. So, usually in LPG systems, copper is used to connect high pressure components, such as the tank and the evaporator. Uh, this is done because um, the connection needs to be very tight and leak proof, because bad things can happen when there is a leak. Uh, because LPG is heavier than air, um, if you're, for example, parked in a parking garage, the entire parking garage can fill up with gas if you're not careful and if there are leaks in your system. And uh, this is, of course, very dangerous because it doesn't ventilate automatically and any spark can set up a, set, yeah, can set up a huge, huge fire, which is bad. So. We use copper along with um, these ends on the copper line. So this copper line has a certain end pushed into it because copper is kind of easy to uh, to manipulate. It's it's pretty soft. You can push these ends into the copper line. Uh, I believe they're called flares. So uh, this is a, a flare and. Uh, this is a flare nut, so these combined can screw into, for example, this high pressure inlet. And what this does, if you screw this in, the copper is kind of sandwiched between the flare nut and this fitting, uh, which results in a, a very tight connection. So, yeah, this is the way usually high pressure components are connected in LPG systems. Um, there are various sizes. Um, usually only two sizes of copper pipe are used. The six millimeter and eight millimeter copper pipe diameters are usually the ones that are picked. Uh, for um, smaller power, lower power engines, the six millimeter pipe is used and for higher power engines, the eight millimeter pipe is used. Um, there are two sizes of flare nuts that are commonly used. This is the smaller type. I'm not exactly sure what the technical specification of this is, but you need a 14 millimeter uh, wrench to undo this or tighten it down. The other flare nut size is the bigger type and you need a 17 millimeter wrench to tighten this one down. Uh, this bigger flare nut is suitable for eight millimeter copper pipes and this smaller version that you can tighten down with a 14 millimeter wrench is suitable for six millimeter pipes. So that's all for, uh, for this video. I hope it was clear and that I uh, taught you something. Anyway, um, if you uh, feel that you need to share anything, 
After watching this, please leave a comment and have a nice day.